Welcome back to Forgotten Hollywood. This summer movie season has been, let's say, less than impressive. Unless you're looking for a record number of flops. OMB Reviews has kept a detailed account of box office numbers, budgets, other costs, and how much each film has actually made or lost this year. Let me tell you, the numbers are shocking. Of the top 25 theatrical releases of summer, from The Little Mermaid to Gran Turismo, only seven have actually made profit. Seven. I'll be covering those in another video, but for now, let's look at the top five biggest losers and my thoughts as to why they all failed so badly. In fifth place, we have Mission Impossible 7. If you saw my review on this, you'd know that I actually enjoyed this movie. However, numbers don't lie, and last I checked, this film has lost a substantial 98.8 million. I would like to take a moment to say that this is fifth place, as in this movie lost the least of all the ones on this list. As the movie was relatively solid, I was surprised to see that it was in the top five biggest losers. But at the same time, I can understand why, as there are a few factors against it. One is the timing. Whenever a good film fails at the box office, I always check to see what was released around the same time. Big Trouble in Little China is considered a classic, but at the time was considered a commercial failure. Released two weeks before Aliens, two weeks after Karate Kid Part 2, three weeks after Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and still in the shadow of Top Gun, which was released a month prior and still managed to hold fourth spot in the box office that weekend. This summer, Mission Impossible 7 got the unfortunate release date of July 12th, one week before Barbenheimer dominated everything. Another thing that I believe negatively affected things was the fact that it was advertised as a part one. In these days of streaming, even fans are generally willing to wait a year to watch two films together rather than stop at a cliffhanger. In fourth place, we have DC's Blue Beetle. Now this one has not even been out a month, but it has very little hope of getting close to its break-even point. At the time of recording, this film has lost an incredible $118.8 million. I was surprised by the last one, but not this one. The first thing working against them was the hero they chose to highlight. I know people who have read the Blue Beetle comics, and the character has been around a long time. But he hasn't really been relevant since the 80s, maybe the 90s when he joined the Justice League, since I and most moviegoers don't read the comics, I only know the DC heroes that have shown up on screen. He was in a single episode of Smallville and featured in several episodes of various DC cartoons, which is where I saw him once, but I don't remember which cartoon I came across as I didn't watch it again. On top of choosing an obscure character, the preview showed scenes reminiscent of a handful of other superhero movies, and it made me feel like they really had nothing new to add. So this is the one movie on the list that I skipped. In third place is Disney's Haunted Mansion Remake. Although I actually did enjoy this movie, I understand why it made the list and why its losses total a whopping $164.9 million. Only Disney would take the hint. The primary thing this movie had working against it, from what I could tell, was the name Disney. The House of Mouse spent the last several years burning bridges between themselves and their fans, from the star of Lightyear wishing death on concerned parents to rewriting favorite stories. Disney is not so slowly destroying itself. The other issue was that this was the second movie based on a Haunted Mansion ride, and while it worked better than the last one, no one really wanted a second attempt. Will Disney finally learn to stop making remakes? The future does not look good here. 
Now we're at the second place spot, which goes to The Flash. While many reports I've seen try to cushion the massive box office miss this film had, the numbers are dismal. As of now, this film is out a massive $289.1 million. I don't know anyone that's surprised that it lost money, just by exactly how much it lost. The key reason for this, I think, is the inflated budget. The film was in production for 10 years. People were joining the project, people were leaving the project, and all those people had to get paid. Not sure how much the star's legal troubles cost the studio, but they did affect the box office. The CGI was pretty cheap, but they had to cut work somewhere. Finally, they made the announcement of a reboot to the whole franchise before this movie's release, which offered very little incentive to actually spend the money to see it. Honestly, I wonder if it would have been better to just take the film as a loss and never release it. They did it with other projects. Now we come to our final spot. The grand prize for Biggest Loser goes to Indiana Jones 5. I don't know if this is a record, but this film alone lost a staggering $377.3 million. To put that into perspective, the Dial of Destiny lost more money than it cost for production and marketing of the Little Mermaid remake combined. I did a whole video on why this movie didn't work as a film, but one of the main reasons for the box office failure was the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. There's also the fact that Lucasfilm, under the Disney umbrella, has not given fans what they want from Star Wars to Willow, and much of the potential audience wasn't going to bother with another unnecessary sequel to a franchise that, for most of us, ended when Indy rode off into the sunset in 1989. Dragging an 80-year-old actor out for an action movie where he plays a 60-year-old retiree isn't exactly the formula for a box office success. Now, these were only the biggest losers. Other films lost a lot less, such as the $37 million lost by The Little Mermaid or the $12 million lost by Elemental. As I said, it was a summer of flops, and I'm curious to see what they're going to try next year. Thanks for watching. Did you see any of these films? Let me know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell for notifications, and I will catch up with you next time.